Hey everybody, welcome to Wood Chat for November 14th, 2012. I'm Matt Gradwall from UppercutWoodworks.com and you can find me on the web at UppercutWoodworks.com or on Twitter at UppercutWood. With me is my buddy Chris. Say hey, Chris. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Chris Wong here from Port Moody, British Columbia, on the little bit north of Matt on the west coast still. Um, you can find me at flarewoodworks.com or on Twitter at flarewoodworks. Right? So, Matt. Yeah. I'm hearing some echo here. I don't know whether it's my end. Oh. Still? No. Okay. Echo should be gone. I muted the uh, I muted the broadcast, so we should be good. Okay. <clears throat> I just wanted to make sure we were broadcasting, and I had to mute that first. So. All right. So, Matt, you've got some news. Yes, I have some news. I had a leak in my garage, um, and it looks like it has been a uh, leak that's been going on for quite a while. Um, it's in the wall. Over there, and of course, your garage is in the. Or your shop is in the garage. My rather. shop is in the garage. Um, it's in the wall between the garage and the kitchen, and um, so right now we don't have hot water. We do have water. We do have our furnace, but we don't have hot water. Um, so we're showering at various friendly people's houses and stuff like that. Um, and the guys are in fixing the shop, and so I figured I would actually be in the shop tonight. Um, so people, if people wanted to take a look at it, they could see it. So, right. this, so that's this been is fun. The, that's been really, really fun. Yeah, this is the first time that we at Woodchat get to see the inside of Matt's shop. <clears throat> it is the first time the the shop has actually been on Woodchat. Um, most of the time I've been Woodchat from my office at work, but with the move to the 7 p.m. time slot, I get to actually be at home for Woodchat, which is great. So. Um, and Very I'm hoping cool. to broadcast more from the shop so that when people ask to see something, I can show them something. So, like my new <laughs> my new dovetail chisel. This is just for cleaning out the little, you know, the little tiny spaces between pins. It works really, really well. I got um, one too. <laughs> yeah, you got one too. Yeah. Mine's a little bit smaller than yours. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to clean this baby up. Oh, what's the name on here? I can almost read the name on here. So, yeah, I look forward to um, this. Works well for Tom Iovino's chisels or Tom Iovino's dovetails. This one's actually from Tom. Huh? That one's from. This Tom? one's actually from Tom. Yeah. Right on. It says, Clopard Buffinoni <laughs> cast steel warranted. I think mine says That's white. Good steel. White. Yeah, I think the name is white, and I think it. There's no way that says 1837 on it. Does that actually say 1837 on it? That's got to be 1937. I wouldn't. I, I can't. I couldn't believe that this would be 1837. No. Um. Anyway, so that's that's something new. My family. Um. My brother lives in the house that we grew up in, and uh, he found a bunch of these things in the uh, in the garage and brought me a whole bunch of stuff. So. So that slick belonged to someone in your family? Yep, that was my grandpa Olson's, um, and it was likely, it was likely um, either his dad's or his father-in-law's. My maternal grandmother's father um, was in construction in Seattle a long, long time ago. Uh, John Otteson was his name, and then my maternal grandfather's father was a cooper, built barrels. Cool. And um, his tools are in the Nordic Heritage Museum in downtown Seattle. So, and I and I have some of them, um, and they just need to be restored. A lot of them are pretty rusty. So, last week when we were talking to Scott, he was mentioning that he wants to build a Cooper's uh, plane. One of those. Yeah, big one of those really long foot, ones that you lean up on your bench. Inverted. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what a that's what a power joiner is based off of, right? Just a big upside down plane. Yeah, basically. So, um, but I got some other cool stuff. I got this little um, little oil can. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I got a friend who collects those things. He loves those. I don't know yeah. why he has so many. So oily. So I'll put, <laughs> yeah, I'll put it down, and I guess I'll wipe it off on my uppercut shirt since that shirt's already trashed. And then what else did he find for me? He found um, 
a couple braces. Uh-huh. Uh, this uh, is two, Stanley. What's that? Two jaw or three jaw? Two. Two jaw. And any, any another one? bits to go with it? Well, I have a I have a set of bits right there in that wooden box. Okay. Uh, underneath that plane. Yep. Um, but he did find more bits that I'll pull out in a second. And then another two jaw Stanley 945 10 inch. Hmm. Um, so now I have three three braces, which is cool. Some of those those need to be cleaned up, but they're they're all right. And then he found um, nice. this little block plane, mm-hmm. little Stanley block plane. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not, it's actually not in too bad of shape. Um, could use a little cleanup. Mm-hmm. Stanley now, how, made in USA. How old do you think that is? It's, I don't know. Um, this is a 60 and a half. Mm-hmm. I'd have to go on supertool.com to figure out how to age, how to figure out the age. The blade looks like it's maybe, oh, it's not an eighth, but it's bigger than a sixteenth. Okay. <clears throat> and um, then he found me this one. Uh-huh. Okay. Is that an, that's not a Stanley, or is it? It is. Uh, it well, is. Hold on. Okay. Let's take a look here. It might not be. I've seen a couple of those uh, similar uh, handle style. It's got you know, kind of like a like a flowery shaped uh, knob underneath the handle, right? Yeah, it doesn't actually say Stanley on it. It does say Made in USA, though. So I don't know. The blade seems to be about the same thickness. Um, the blade's got a camber on it, so you wouldn't usually do that with a small plane like that. Um, maybe if it were being used for a butcher block. Yeah, or. If it wasn't being used by a furniture maker, but by somebody doing um, construction, and the Stanley Tri Square still has still has the brass. Um, this is, I guess, a number twenty. Hmm. Seems like it's in okay shape. It looks like it got wet. Uh-huh. So, um, uh huh. So. Rusted or just uh, water damage on the handle, or? Looks like the looks like the handle's water damaged. There's a little bit of rusting, but it's actually pretty good. Um. Nice. And then for Bill, since I know Bill just got here, oh, this is my little, um, I use this for getting slivers out. Works really well. Look at the things as big as my head. <laughs> is, is that a, a three-inch wide blade or? Well, let's, let's check it out. So are you, are you sitting at your bench right now? I'm sitting in a chair right at my bench. Okay. Three and a half inches. Three and a half, Jesus. Three and a half monster. inch wide blade, yeah. Mine's about two inches. And I'm pretty sure my grandpa used this for removing uh, linoleum and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> off floors. And, okay. um, yeah, so that's fun. Not your traditional use for a slick? Nope, nope. <laughs> but it worked, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I finally got my WIA purchase, and I Did haven't even unboxed it. So I'll unbox it right now. This isn't old. It's an old design, but it's brand new. I hardly saw you at Woodworking in America, Matt. We were there. For... You were at the booth pretty busy. Yeah. yeah. How, how, how was your booth? Were you pretty busy? Yeah, um, it was uh, moderately. Not as busy as I would have liked. But... Yeah. I think I might have showed you this at the show when I bought it. My shop is such a mess. Rabbiting? Very nice. Yeah, it doesn't seem to want to focus on it. But. I can, okay. <clears throat> Lee Nielsen so, Rabbiting Block Plane, beautiful. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked to, uh, to give this a run. I thought you were going to say give it away. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm not giving this away. I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked to actually use it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's pretty darn heavy, man. Yeah. But it. the fit and finish on this thing is just ridiculous. Yeah. And it's ready to go. So. Is there a specific use you bought it for? Uh, cleaning up pieces of tenons. Okay. Um, faces, not, not shoulders, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I have a shoulder plane for that. 
So, um, because I have a a full jet uh, floor Mortis. stand mortiser with an XY table. Yeah. So I nice. cut my tenons to fix my mortises. Um, because I just make really good mortises with that thing. So, mm -hmm. um, so let's see. What else did I get from my family? Oh yeah, I got a pile of sauce. So, let's see here. Let me fix the camera a little bit. So here's the first saw I got. I don't know how good a shape it's in, but it's a Distin. Uh, and it's got the house number. Oh, it's got some pretty bad rust there on the, on the end. It's got the house number that my grandfather and grandmother lived in um, punched into the uh, handle. Uh-huh. I'm not sure that one's. I'm not sure that one's sal salvageable. No. And then a distant D8. This one's actually in pretty good shape. Um, I'm not really seeing any bends or kinks in it. The handle's a little loose. It's also got the house number of my grandfather's house stamped in the handle. And this one's in really bad shape. Yeah. But this is a much older saw. Hmm. You can see the uh, the tooth there. Yeah. Um, it's in really, it's in pretty dang bad shape. Now, is it just, does it just need to be cleaned up, or why, why it no, we'll see. What makes it bad shape? Yeah. It's, the rust it's looks good. like it's pretty, the rust looks like it's pretty deep. Character. And it looks like it's got paint or something on it. Character. Hmm. <laughs> it's got character, yeah. That might, that might be the kind where you sell it to a lady and she puts it on her wall. Yeah, I'd use them. Um, then this is really little. That's a nice this size. This has also What's got that? my grandfather's. Nice What's that? 20, 20 inches, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's a 20 nice. incher. Nice. I'd, I'd like to sell that size. Uh, a it's small got my um, grandfather's house number in it. It's a distant. It's still got the button. Mm -hmm. um, pretty bad rust. But I think this was the one that he bought that I used a lot when I was a kid. Yeah. A small little saw like that. What was that? Four saws so far. Four. Then there's this one, which is I think it's pretty ugly. It's got a plywood handle, uh -huh. and it's got these chrome, <laughs> chrome things on the side, and I don't see any manufacturer's mark, yeah. which means it might have been like a Kmart or something like that. So I guess that's saw number five. Is that six. Five? five or six? That's six. Two, four. No, that's five. One, two, three. Yeah. But wait, there's more. There is more. But there's this <laughs> one. This, this big old one, which is similar wow. to the last one, but it's in much better shape. Is it missing a few teeth in the middle there? It looks like a. No, I don't see any missing teeth. Okay, I don't I see, see any missing teeth. Oh, okay. no, you know what that missing is? That's paint. paint. Yeah, That's paint. Okay. But it's got the starting yeah. nib thing. Um, it's a, that's, a, that's, a big, that's a good big saw right there. Yeah. I'll show you my, my grandfather's other saw that I, that I have here in a second. This one looks relatively new, if you look at the handle. Um... It's so you're saying that it's got less shaping in the handle? Is that why you say it's relatively new? Or no, um, it's got my my, my grandfather sh sh scratched his name into it. It's got a button on it. It says "Warranted Superior," but it doesn't have a it doesn't have an etching on the blade. But just with the handle being dark cherry and still glossy, oh, okay, I feel like it it hasn't been worn down. Yeah. Um, and then an old Montgomery Ward miter box saw. Okay. Really heavy here. Did you get a Superior miter box? Superior quality too? tempered blade, filed and set, Montgomery Ward. 
Powercraft 100. Oh, so if this one says warranted superior and this one says warranted superior, then this must have been a Montgomery Ward saw too, I think. I so, ton not, of saws. Not quite sure you can. Yeah. A ton of saws, and then, uh, but if you want to see the big papa saw. He's not done yet. <laughs> look up there. Whew. Yeah, so that was my grandfather okay. too. He didn't do a great job putting on an authentic replacement handle on that one, uh -huh. on the end there. Yeah, on the but, tip. Uh, the rest of it's the rest of it's pretty good. So, so wow. I have a lot of um, tool cleanup. Yeah, tool cleanup ahead of me. Yeah. So Bill and I are wondering how you're going to take on the task of uh, cleaning up the saws. <laughs> well, there's that evapo rust stuff. Um, so I'm thinking of just getting a long. Uh, like Rubbermaid bin, yeah, almost like the kind you'd put under a bed, and putting yeah. them in there with a bunch of that evapo rust and and just letting them, letting that cook it off, and then yeah. synthetic yeah. steel wool to clean them up. And uh, but you know what I really want to do first is if any of the if any of the steel has kinks or bends in it, right, then it's basically lost, and you you could cut it up and make scrapers or something, but it's basically yeah. lost. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> do you uh, use rust erasers? I haven't yet. I need to get some because I yeah. I have some planes that I need to use them on. Those are usually my the first thing I reach for when I have rust. They're they're quick and you, they're instant, right? Do they, they do a do good they job? Last, or do you yeah. wear, burn through them? Um, mine look like they're brand new. <laughs> um, I've been using them for a couple of years, so they they last a really long time. Really, they wear down a little bit quicker if you're doing um, something with like a corner that cuts into it or wears a groove in it. But yeah. if you're doing flat stuff, then uh, no trouble at all. Um, okay, I'm gonna pull up rusty races here. Yeah, I think for these I might start with the evapo rust first, just because that would be a lot of manual labor on all those on all those saws. And then, um, and then typically what I'll do is I'll take pictures of them, try and take good yeah. pictures of them. And uh, I'll email Matt Cianci, and I'll say, what do you think? And he'll tell me which ones are worth um, sending to him, and then I'll, I'll send them to him, and he'll do his magic on them. Oh, that's the, uh, yeah. that's the rust eraser. Yeah, so there's, they're like a, it's like a rubber block with an abrasive in it. Okay. Okay. Lee Valley. Lee Valley, Of yeah. course it is. Okay. Here's your part um, numbers if you want them there. Fairly cheap, two five fifty each. That's not that bad. I just get a set of three of those. Get um, a set, yeah. So then I'll email pictures to Matt Sianci and ask him what he thinks. And then for the ones that are good, I'll send them to him, and have him professionally sharpen them. Um, and then if I ever need to resharpen them, I'll just follow the lines he left, right? Because he'll leave angles on the teeth and he'll leave all that. And right. Um, so. But I need to build a saw till because I still have saws that he has sharpened for me that I haven't. I, I don't have a saw till for, so I keep them in the box that he sent them to me in. Right. Same with yeah. my um. Same with my tools. I my saws. I had Bad Axe Tool Works. Mark Harrell sharpened for me. So, mm -hmm. so I, I have a lot of work to do, and I'm hoping this winter is going to be pretty productive. I'm I'm not really going to take any jobs. I'm just going to build stuff for myself to get organized. So good. Yeah. You need that first. Yeah, I really got to get that done because I get tired of moving stuff and moving stuff around or setting like all my planes. Well, I mean, there they are. Yeah. Right. They're just that's 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 where I've been keeping them for a long time. Yeah. And, you uh, see the plane rack that I've got, Matt, right on the wall behind me here. They're up on the on an angle here. Yeah, that's that's what I need. That's so. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. So Most I need to my fix planes my, are stored there. I I've got a couple that don't fit on there that they're they're under the bench, but yeah, I've got a good space under my bench, but I use that to keep um, stuff like this. Okay, yeah. So I've got a couple sliders under my uh, under one side of my bench where I have my my tools and 
chisels and mallets and stuff. Yeah. And I think I'll make a special place for this, mm. and I'll need to get a new handle because this one's this one's shredded. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. Yeah. Is that um a socket on the yeah, end of there? Yeah, it's, it's socket, yeah. but it's also got a little set screw in here. Okay, that's, which that's I think good, is something that's, I think we. Yeah, I think that um that was basically added so that when you pull the thing up, you don't drop the you don't drop the chisel on your yeah that would be yeah, bad yeah it's a little safety element there so but yeah right now I just have stuff stacked everywhere it, it's usually much more organized and it's it's pretty frustrating mm -hmm. that it's not right now so I think that maybe uh, in the future we should get uh, mm -hmm. do a wood chat focused on shop organization yeah. Yeah, well, if you if you have somebody who's good at that, I'd love to have them on here and organize my shop for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, there are pick? people who all they want to do is collect tools and organize shops. Maybe they can just come organize mine. Yeah, yeah. So, I've been holding off on it because I know that eventually my wife and I are going to move. But there's stuff I can build that I can move with me, like a sawtill or yeah, yeah. a thing for my planes. So... I just need to do it. And then with the leak that they found, I had to move a bunch of stuff kind of over into the shop so that those guys could get their lumber in here. Like if okay. you look behind my joiner, there's a big piece of OSB. Yeah. That's an honor of Diami, um, and that's to fix my fix my wall. And then behind it is a big piece of flooring. So, And then the R-Tech, that's my portable spray booth. Okay. Is that foam? Yeah, really lightweight foam, just gaffers taped together. And yeah. then if you see those circles mm -hmm. of plywood that okay, are right yeah. in front of the OSB, that's my little rotating table. So Okay. Nice. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see that some other day. Yeah. So you have been doing some interesting stuff in your shop. You're experimenting with yes. chemicals, I've, alchemy. I, I've uh, ventured into the world of uh, casting. Um, last week, last Monday, I think it was, I started a uh, another spontaneous tweet along, and um, didn't know what I was doing, like usual. Then I ended up by the end of the day, I, I felt that I was making a shelf. Um, <laughs> don't have a picture here. I can. Oh, I can't do it. How can I show you this? Um, I think there's a picture. I can find it. Um, anyhow, there's three separate pieces that I split out. And what I was, what I'm trying to do, is I want to cast them into a, uh, into a shelf, into one unit. There are three pieces uh, separate here. I'm pulling the picture up right now as I talk. So I bought, um, I don't know what is this stuff here? It's called uh, Crystal Clear 202 um, by Smooth On. It's a water clear urethane casting resin. So I got uh, that resin which I picked up today to do the casting. Here's the project. Let's see if I can get that bigger. So there's three separate pieces here um, and what happened I think when this tree was taken down mm -hmm. um, either from when it fell or maybe from winds or something they were shaking it anyhow. Um, shake is like splits along the uh, growth, wing, growth mm -hmm. wings. So there were uh, cracks that I could see along the growth rings, and I stuck a wedge in there and started um, hammering them in until these two pieces popped off. So you can see it was a board. It has a flat spot here. There's a flat along where the mel where it sits against the melamine there. Yeah. So those were those were the the top and bottom of the board at one point, and I popped okay. them off. So now I'm I've got three pieces that are exploded. So my idea is to separate them by a few inches and then, then uh, cast them back so they're stuck together but apart. Okay, so you, it's like you're encasing them in clear acrylic almost. Yeah, yeah, so that's right. Okay, so you and is that is that going to be a tabletop? It'll be a shelf probably. It's about seven inches wide by maybe twenty-two, twenty-three inches. Okay. So it's not not terribly big. Um, it'll just be a shelf for stuff. That's kind of cool. 
So it'll, it'll so, be like it'll be like those things are um, encased in glass. Yeah, except it'll yeah, except and it'll people be able to look at it and say, oh, these used to actually go together in nature. Yeah, That's yeah, it's, a, it's a, an exploded thing. Um, I'm calling it deconstructed right now. I don't know yeah. if they'll stick with that name, but yeah. Um, so the resin here, I I bought had to buy two kits to get enough for what I'm doing. It actually won't do the full uh, three inches of thickness. It'll only give me about a half inch or some something around that. That's our estimate. Um, this stuff here cost me about eighty eighty five dollars. So to go three inches, I'd be looking at oh I don't know, a couple hundred few hundred dollars anyways, which is more than I want to spend for this project. The two so, the two batches cost you eighty five dollars or was eighty five dollars each? Uh, eighty five dollars for two um, okay. two of these units here. And the two of those two together will give you a half an inch. About that, yeah. Wow. That, that, so, that's what our calculation was. Um, um, we'll see. So you need six more double batches to go three inches. Uh, no, five more. But okay. to do six, you, you'd be so at $480. Six, 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 500 bucks, yeah. Wow. Casting's not... From what I've seen so far, it's not cheap. I'd love to hear from other people who do this... Um, have more experience whether there's whether it gets cheaper at some point if you get a certain product or if you're buying it by the five gallon bucket I don't think it's much yeah. cheaper but um, so that's what I spent my money on today yeah. I've I also had to buy um, uh, release wax which is a little can of uh, soft paste wax and uh, most of today I've been waxing melamine and buffing it off so. <laughs> That's fine for gotta wax that melamine to keep it nice. Yeah. Uh so wax it, nice nice thin coat on and then half an hour about before it dries, and then you buff it off and then another another uh coat. The guy the guy at the store said about uh seven coats or something, that's what I'll be looking for. So I'm at three coats. Okay. So um, So it'll be the shelf will be flat on top. Yeah. But the and wood open. itself will be exposed below. Absolutely. That'll be cool. Yeah. So people will see it from the top, but they'll be able to kind of reach underneath and touch it. Yeah, it'll be functional, but um, it'll, there'll only be as much resin as I need to make it functional. Yeah, to make it Just the bare minimum. Yeah. That's my motto. Yeah, the bare minimum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's your motto for your hair right now. Yeah, the bare Well, I could. it's actually getting pretty long. <laughs> like it's like a... Oh. Whole finger uh, long. Watch out because when you get to liking short hair, um, you start to go shorter and shorter. And as it yeah. starts to grow out, it it, get, it gets really itchy as it grows out. Mm, okay. So watch so. out for that because it's not fun. And then you just keep yeah. then you just keep butchering it and butchering it and butchering it. Yeah. Yeah. So. So how do you maintain the top of your head, Matt? Uh, I have a Braun electric shaver that people usually use on their face. Okay. It's the kind that you put into its little magical recharging stand and it cleans itself. Yep. So I use that on my face and I use it on the head too. And Is that a, a weekly thing or? Twice a week usually. Twice a week, yeah. Yeah, hmm. and, it, um, and it makes me... Makes me look suave and beautiful. <laughs> I'm pulling up picture. I'm going to save some pictures of this guitar that this guy built to show you guys. Right. Yeah. You've had a friend uh, working in your shop, right? Yeah. So I have a friend who is a um, city of Redmond, where I live. He's a detective. Okay. And uh, him and his wife actually just had a baby. And he has been working on a guitar in my shop. It's a Telecaster. Okay. Is there a connection? Is there a connection there between him and his wife just having a baby and him being in your shop building a guitar? No, he's just just no, telling okay. a story about how awesome this guy is. Okay. Um, let's see. So let me screen share the photo viewer. There we go. So there it is. Um, Built out of a solid piece. Um, it's got my brand in the 
space oh, for the oh, neck. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we had a template that he downloaded. Um, so all of those little spots here are for the electronics and pickups and things like that. Yep. The neck goes right here where I'm wiggling the mouse. And then the strings, there's a line of holes down here where the strings go all the way through. And there's grommets on the back side. Um, okay. <laughs> and then uh, all the knobs and stuff like that go here. And then you can barely see it. There's a hole here that goes through to the back for the, for the plug-in. But all these things are connected. So there's a hole that goes from here to here. Right. Hole that goes from here to here. Hole that goes from here to here. There isn't one that goes to the neck, though, I don't think. And then... No. But he finished this with... Uh, he sanded it himself. He used my Bosch power sander, my new one, my new random orbital sander. Primed it, hand sanded it, primed it, hand sanded it. Used some rattle cans, um, sanding in between coats, and then did some clear lacquer. I think it turned out pretty good. I've seen it in person. It looks great. And then... That's is, this, and then is that white? Is it white or is it... It's, it's an off-white. I can't remember what they call okay. it. I think they call it blonde or some kind of... Okay. And then here it is finished. So he's got the neck on there. Nice. He's got all the electronics in and the pickups and all that stuff. And so... Now, I'd like to know how you connect the holes between the slots for the electronics because obviously you can't get a drill in at, at that angle, or can you? Um... I was very nervous when we did that part. Uh -huh. um, we literally drilled down at an angle into this one and down at an angle, and the holes met in the middle. Oh, okay. So you, you do kind of a V. Yep. <clears throat> and, um, and then the interesting part is um, before you put the electronics in, you get this tape that's basically uh, thin copper with adhesive on the back. And you line all of these pockets. Okay. And then you then you connect them all with a wire okay. and you, that you solder onto all these on the onto all the copper. And you connect it all to ground. So all these pockets are lined. Okay. All the okay. all the pocket linings are connected and grounded. So that you it, it's wow. you know, supposed to smooth out any hiss. And <laughs> then you put your electronics in, and then you put this plate. Um, over the top, yeah, uh, the, the and then you can string it. and then the the neck um, is actually there's four screws that go from the back into the neck. The holes in the body are um, intentionally uh, larger diameter than the screw, right? Um, so that it's literally held on by pressure, and the, and that the screws really aren't dug into the body at all. So. So that was fun. That was fun. So was, was that the first? Share, was my screen share working? Is it off now? It yep. is off now. Yep. You're good. So, so, so that was, was fun. That, that, was that the first time either of you have built a guitar? Or? You know, that's the second time he did it. The first time, time he okay. did it, he, he had a different body on that guitar that he built okay. in a friend's garage a long time ago, and it was pretty brutal. It was very yeah. late 80s, early 90s uh, hairband. Uh-huh. But he had bought that neck from a professional guitar neck manufacturer, where you just buy the you buy the neck yeah. all yeah. all done. Yeah. Um, and uh, and he, and the electronics and stuff were good, so he he reused all of that. That's good. So yeah, there's first a lot I've of, done uh, it though. There's a lot of uh, specs for the neck. You need to have a certain radius for the profile of the fretboard. Yeah. And you need to have your your frets cut at the right spacing and have them the right uh, width yep. of curve and get them and square. There's a and there's bar that goes all the way down the neck. Yes, does that too. So it's easier to just uh, buy one. Buy one of those. Um, and he he downloaded the DXF file that was the CAD drawing of the Telecaster, printed it out, taped it all together. It had registration marks. Um, and handmade a template in um, press board, uh, uh -huh. but it actually worked out really well. We it was it was it was good enough that we could use it as a router template, and so we just hooked up the Bosch, okay. my new Bosch plunge router, put the <laughs> vacuum attachment on there, and 
it was really, really quick. Worked out really, really well. Um, now that I have access to a laser cutter at work, I'd probably yeah. just load the um, DXF file into the computer, put some, uh, I think they call it 5 millimeter plywood into the laser cutter, and print myself a, a router template. Mm -hmm. So That's you've got a... You got a new Bosch sander, a new Bosch router. You, did you win a workshop or something from Bosch? No, I um, I've been having to replace my old Porter cable tools that are starting to die that I've had since '98. Um, uh, okay. And when I've been doing the research, um, Bosch is pretty much the best you can go outside of going Festool, which I'm not going to start that addiction. And they're redesigning a lot of their tools to be brushless. And yes. they're really winning a lot of awards. And even their dust collection rivals Festool. Yeah. And basically the secret is you go to the website and you find out if it's made in Switzerland. And if it is, you buy it because it's awesome. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty happy with them so far. Yeah. The and sander you have, is that the, is that the really tall one? The sander? Yeah. yeah, it is actually pretty tall. Okay. The dust collection on it, even without a vacuum, is awesome, though. Let me show you. So, adjust the camera here a little bit. So, let's see how tall it is. Yeah, that's what we're that one's supposed to, it's got a, the housing is somehow isolated from the pad, yeah. right? So it's low, low vibration. Yeah, it's very low vibration. And the, 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 um, this, the handle here can come off if you want it to come off. Mm -hmm. so you can get and you can have spaces. a five inch pad or a six inch pad. Oh, really? Yeah, it's seven uh, and a half inches high. When you say a five or six, you mean you can take off that pad and replace it? You can take, you can take this off with one wrench uh -huh. and put on a smaller one. If you want, um, I just kept with six inch, and I got a bunch of cling spore six inch paper yep. from their website on clearance, and it was ridiculously cheap, and it's it's really good. But you can see this dust collection canister. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this actually has um, a paper bag in it, Let's see. or a paper filter. Yeah. But it's amazing how much this actually like it gets the dust. It's crazy. So, um, but you can take that off. You can take the canister off and put on a uh, vacuum adapter. So it's pretty good. I like it. I like it a lot. And for the Bosch tools, when they're made in Switzerland, you're just you're you're rocking. But if you look here in this gap, I don't know if you can see that gap. That's where they do their dampening. So yeah. I can I can wiggle it a little bit there. It's almost like it's almost like the uh, the motor and the pad are held together with a big rubber boot. Um, Bill wants to show you. Bill wants you to show what you showed before because you couldn't see that it was off camera. Oh, okay. Which piece here? I don't know, Bill. Which piece? So I'm curious, Matt, does the, does the cling spore paper stick away or does it cling pour? <laughs> it clings well. The cling spore clings well. Oh, that's good. So anyway, Bill, I think what you're talking about is right in here there's a gap right above the silver, okay? And basically above that silver there's a little blue plate that's screwed into oh. the base, and that blue plate attaches... Um, the pad to the motor basically with a gigantic rubber uh, grommet. So I can actually wiggle the motor a little bit on here and it's not wiggling the pad, it's actually it's actually articulating a little bit right in right here at this joint. Yeah, uh, Bill's saying that he can't see your feed, he can't see your video, he just sees mine. Um, I can see your video oh, fine though, I'm not because, sure. because you're talking and I need to click on... Oh, okay. Sorry, there we go. Hi. Now it's a big picture for everybody. Okay. Now Bill can see. All right. Now that's better. That's right better here. Right, Bill. Yeah. Here, let's do this. Let me be dem demonstrative. 
right here, there's a gap that my pencil is going into. That basically connects the motor to the base with uh, like a gigantic rubber, rubber grommet. So I can move the motor, bend it back and forth with the base being still. There, now he's happy. I can take off yeah. this handle if I can take off this handle if I want. Um, this is their dust collection. Um, I can take off this whole canister if I want and hook up a vacuum with this little adapter. And the adapter actually rotates, so you don't get that whole my vacuum hose is trying to turn my sander thing, right? Um, but their filter on here, it's got a really long cord too, which I like. But their filter, their dust collection, the dust all goes into here, and then you just knock it out. And if you wanted to, you could buy a new one of these, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to knock this one out as much as possible. So I, I, this sander's great. And then right here, there's one screw. I can take the 6-inch pad off and put on a 5-inch pad if I want. Very nice. Um, That's got an interesting hole pattern in the bottom, too. They're elongated. Is there a reason yeah. for that? Um, I think it's... I don't know if there's a good reason for it. I think it might be because the hole pattern... It, I, I didn't feel like um, it was easy to find um, sandpaper for this, so I'm wondering if it's a new... Oh, is that a six? Uh, I didn't, how many slots are on the bottom? Are there eight slots? or? Yeah, I think it's eight slots. Mm, okay. No, it's six hole. It's six hole. Okay. okay. Yeah, six inch six hole. Uh, yeah. And so I, I, it was really hard to find it, but here, you know, the cling spore is. is yeah. I've been pretty happy with the stuff, and so it was a really good price. And so I just bought a ton of it. It was ridiculously cheap, and then I gave all my five inch paper to uh, Neil Layman's nephew Cody. Oh, okay. He lives pretty near here, and. Sometimes we'll borrow tools. As a matter of fact, he's got my Erlex sprayer right now. Um, so this sander is rocking, and it's got a really long cord. And um, the reviews on it, I looked at Fine Woodworking. I got a membership of Fine Woodworking. I do all, look at all their tool reviews. And uh, this, one's, this one's done very, very well. So, so how long have you had that, Pat? Maybe three months. Okay. But some good. It still looks brand new. Have you had a chance to use it a? Oh a lot? yeah, yeah. Okay. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say I've used it a lot. Um, but this this is what sanded the guitar. Okay. Yeah. So, and um, I I know I'll use I'll know I'll use it a heck of a lot more coming up. I have a tough question for you. You may not know the answer to. Yeah. Um, what's the stroke? Oh, on the on the random orbit. Yeah. Um, how, how far does the pad move? I can't remember, but I know that Fine Woodworking tested it and talked about leaving pigtails and swirls, yeah. and, and that this did really, really well. Left a very good, good. Left a very good finish. I can't remember the stroke, though. Yeah. Uh, I can find out on Bing in about two, two seconds, though. <laughs> um, or maybe it says on the specs here. No, it doesn't. No, it probably won't. Um, it looks like the rotations are 5,500 to 12,000 per minute. Okay. But that doesn't, really, that doesn't tell you the orbit. That doesn't tell you the orbit no. variation. No. Right? So, and you can get these replacement pads too when you wear them out. So. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, I've got the Merca Cirrus for anyone who doesn't know it. So it's a very different one, sander like as well. It's got the DC converter, that one? Yeah, yeah. It looks like um, looks like an air sander. Yeah, because it's, it's, electric. Got that, it's got that suitcase that power power inverter thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. I've heard that's very, a very What I like about one. it is that it's... Yeah, I, I've tried actually your sander at a show. And yours is a little bit lower vibration. This one is very smooth, very powerful. Um, I like it because I can use it one-handed, and it's a low-profile sander. Yeah. So my sculptural stuff, I can use it to get around corners and into tight areas, and does what I need to do very well. It's got variable speed and uh, 
actually a variable speed trigger as well. Oh, really? So that's Super one nice. thing that, that 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 random orbit sander is not for. Yeah. Getting into curves and corners very well, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's mostly for. For flat work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, there's a good question on here. Are we going to do this on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving? I will not I be in town. Thing. I will be out of town. Um, yeah. But maybe we maybe we try for um, the Friday after Thanksgiving or or Saturday or something like that. But I will I'll be out of town. Actually, I don't, I should find out when I get back. I don't. My wife planned this trip. I don't know when I get back. So. I think I already had Thanksgiving, but I'm not sure. Yeah, you guys did, didn't you? <laughs> I don't remember. You I don't, don't know? know my holidays. You don't know when Canadian Thanksgiving is. I don't know when any holidays are. I think we must have. You got to know when New Year's is. <laughs> it's at the, the first or the thirty-first. <laughs> Both. Okay. Yeah. The answer is yes. I, I know that one. And I know Christmas, and I know Remembrance birthday. Those are those three are easy. The rest. Yeah. Yeah, you know, not so good with. So, what else is going on in your shop besides the crazy casting, waxing melamine adventures? Right. Um, oh, I've been. Oh, a couple other things. Um, one one thing I just remembered. Um, I've got overflow back. Um, I cleaned up my shop a while ago, and um, I pulled out a whole bunch of tools which I forgot I had and out of the corners. So, I'm giving them away. Um, subscribe to my blog, and you can. I'll let you know when uh, they're coming out, so you can put your name down and, and just draw a name at random at the end of the day or whenever I choose to. The um, reason I mention that is I one of the things that I have is um, one of those uh, vibrating sanders, like just like the regular orbital sanders, like the old school ones that nobody uses anymore, right? And One of these? Yeah. Uh, mine's, a, mine's, a, mine's a third sheet, though. Mm. And for this casting, what you do is, there's two ways you can do a casting and uh, not get bubbles. The first way is to make your mold, pour it in, and then put in a pressure pot under 60 PSI, and that forces out the bubbles so you get a clear uh, clear casting. Yeah. The, the other way is to vibrate it. So you're using your sander for that? That's what I want to do, yeah. I'll take the, the sanding, sanding pad off it and then hold it up to it and vibrate it out. Um, I think I said a washing machine would work too. Put it on top yeah. of your washing machine. So, yeah, I might actually keep that sander for that use. Yeah. I gave away, my, gave away one already. Um, so my my Merca, none of my other tools vibrate enough. I don't have a <laughs> multi-master or anything. Uh, Oh yeah, smooth, one so. of those would work. One of those all-purpose multi-master cutting tool things. Yeah, I probably would. Um, plug it in, clamp it to it, and watch your bubbles go away. How about uh, those um, those trimmers for your, for your hair clippers? A wall clipper. <laughs> that yeah. Um, right. What was I talking about? I was. Oh yeah, this uh, table. Um, and the tools you're giving away. Right. Yeah. Um, Giving away workshop stuff that I don't use anymore. Um, mm -hmm. If you're if you need something for your shop and you think I might have it, uh, flarewoodworks.com. Sign up to subscribe to my blog, and I'll let you know when something's being given away. I then should do can, the same thing. That cardboard box right there. Uh huh. The one that's next to the uh, vacuum. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's full of stuff that. I'll, pr I'll probably take it into work and sell it to the woodworkers at work. Yeah, that's good um, too. Because there's a set of Garrett Wade chisels in there that I can, I can sell. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I need to do the same thing as part of my shop organization is get rid of the stuff that I don't need anymore. Yeah. I'd really like to get rid of the Barbie Jeep that my wife keeps in the garage so that I don't have to move that every time I want to do, do something. Yeah, it's easier than moving a full-size car, I think. Yeah. All right. So well, there are no. This one table I want to show you guys here. Oh yeah, show it. Show us. I'm trying to find the pictures of it. Oh, this is all I have. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you guys here. I'm just going to drag the camera over here. Unplug my mic. Hang on. Okay.
You gotta hurry though, because my battery is dying. And we will go off air when it shuts down. Uh oh. Any life left there? Just a tiny bit of life, man. We gotta hurry. Here you go. So this is a uh, black locust here. Um, it's got a a wedge tenon in the top here, and it just I've got it hung. Uh, I can't. I can't see what I'm doing now. I've got. Oh yeah, it, yeah. In the back here, a wedged mortise and tenon. So if I take my mallet. Wedge. Oh, I did that really tight. <laughs> Anyhow, the two pieces come together. Yeah. Uh, one big joint, no glue. Very That's cool. What I'm doing. So I like. Um, I've been making a few of these tables. I want to make more and start producing them to sell. Yeah. They're fun. They're pretty quick to make. Uh, no glue up time. And they'll ship flat if I want. Yeah, the shipping will be great. And assembly for the customers will be easy. Yep. And installation is easy too. They slip it on the onto the bracket and they they're really sturdy on there too. That's cool. Um, this one I've been leaning on actually what I do is I put like this. Boy, I feel like I'm off. Uh oh. I've been doing that for about uh two weeks now. For a week, a week, anyways. It finally, fell off. Not meant to take that kind of weight, but it's a really strong connector. That's cool. Uh, Very cool. Put 140 pounds on it and jump on it. That's cool. That's very cool. It'd be a good. It'd be good. Like a. It'd be a great table between two two big leather chairs. You know. Yeah, I can see that for for your drink, for your remote, whatever. Yeah. I like the idea of a drink on it. Yeah, I like the idea of a drink on it too. <laughs> sure. now. All right, man, we should.